think you'll touch turns to death. God won't send us a cross that's heavier than we can bear. My daughter died in his car. I think a girl's death will affect her chances at being the president. I hope this doesn't mean we'll be losing you. I want you to do something important with your life. I want you to do something that would make your father proud. My father is dead. We need to take some responsibility. It's now or never. I want this. Don't let it be for God. <laughs> that once there was a spot. The one brief, shining moment. That was known as Camelot. I wish I had died. Better run through the jungle. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Congratulations on, on the show. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, Katie, I have to ask, you know, after doing the first Kennedys, coming back to it, does it still feel like you're playing Jackie, Jackie O, or does it feel like a kind of a character that belongs in this world rather than in the real world? Um. I think I speak for Katie when I say I don't understand the question. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. At a certain point, after playing a character for so long, and does it does it feel like you're sort of still basing it on the real Jackie O, or is it part of this sort of television world that's been created? I see. Just said it the same thing again. <laughs> no, I still don't understand. No, no. <laughs> um, no elaborating. I got nothing. <laughs> well, I think that whenever you play a real person, there is a marriage that happens between you and your research. Um, you you put a lot of yourself into that character. And you don't, you know, you don't want to just imitate somebody. You want to find, you know, you're inventing what you think that person felt um, at that given moment. Um, the difference and the reason why I wanted to do After Camelot, after doing The Kennedys, is because you got to see Jackie um, not only go through the tragic circumstances that she did and get through them, but you saw her move on and heal and um, be strong. And she taught the Kennedys how to do that. And she, she stayed very involved. That was her family. And um, you really get to see these very public people um, who seem very untouchable have human moments that we all have. And I felt like that was... Uh, good storytelling and something that people could relate to, and also there's such a mystique to the family that it is it is entertaining. Was it nerve wracking first playing Jackie O versus playing her now? Have you did you get over some of the, those nerves, or does it stay there? I think it was more. It, it, it's for an actor, any job is nerve wracking, so you start there. Um, this after Camelot was more challenging. Uh, for me, because Jackie goes through more than she did in the other miniseries. She's getting older. She's raising her kids. She's falling in love. She's dealing with her PTSD from Jack dying. She's... Not just Jack, Jack, and Bobby. The show yeah. kind of opens with, with, with Bobby. Exactly. Um, and her relationship with Ted and how he helped her and she helped him, but how they had their conflicts... Um, and so the, there was a lot of emotion in, in this performance and, um, and it was nerve wracking to go there, quite honestly. Matthew, I read that you said that playing Ted Kennedy scared the shit out of you. I didn't, I didn't read anything after that. So I'm wondering <laughs> why it scared the shit out of you. I, I don't know that that's the terminology I use, sir. It scared you shitless? Uh, no, I did, it, it did scare me. I was, uh, it's a... It's a daunting task to play somebody who is uh, known uh, by the in the public eye that everybody knows, um, and you know an, ac an accent and prosthetic ears and wigs. And I played him from the age of uh, 38 to 67, I believe. 
Um, and as an actor, you look for challenging roles like this, and once you find one, you can't turn it down because you're a scaredy cat. So you have to uh, take it take it on, and that's what I did. Um, so yes, the, the role was scary. The, the idea of not just being in a drama, but being in a real tragedy, which is what this story is. It's a, you know, it's an, obviously an iconic family and to show the humanism of them, that they are real people and that they went through these tragic events. Um, and to play the fact that they're actual human beings um, was a challenge also. But it's a, it's a tragedy, and it's a very minimalistic style of acting that Katie uh, as a director and John as a director were going for. So uh, it was a different style of acting, too. Um, so you had to get it all right. And I wanted to not really do a Ted Kennedy impression as much. I wanted to get as much knowledge as I could about the man and uh, then bring some of myself to the party as well. So um, all of it had to you know, come into place, fall into place, and uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully it did. Katie, so the reason that you go for a sort of minimal approach when it comes to the acting is because already the Kennedys have become somewhat tabloidy figures, and this story itself is so tragic and could be viewed as melodramatic, or it could be read as melodramatic, and you want to add a little more reality to it by making it a bit more minimal? Well, <clears throat> absolutely, and, and, and I think that, you know, the goal in the first miniseries and in this miniseries is to be as authentic as possible. We weren't looking to do a tabloid version of these people. Um, it, it's, it's really a love letter to them. And um, in playing Jackie Kennedy, I am a huge fan of hers. And so I wanted to do my best to find the truth in all of the moments and um, make her someone that we understand maybe a little bit better and appreciate more. So that was my starting point. Matthew, what do you think uh, you brought to the role about yourself? You said you brought some of yourself and as well as your research into, into Ted. What do you think about yourself you brought to the role? Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> nope. A little bit. Uh, a little bit, yes. Uh, Katie allowed me to put one moment of levity in the film. What moment is that? Um, when you're, uh, well, every day, it was such a, well, I'll tell you two quick stories about that. It was such a dramatic piece and such a tragic story that the set was unbelievably dark, serious, and... And I was also really hungry. Yes, and you were always very hungry. I was always very hungry, because yeah, she was I, so skinny, and I was like... <laughs> yeah, and I was just constantly trying to act over the sound of Katie's stomach. Um, so, but, you know, everybody was so serious the whole time, and we were doing a scene where we were shooting in this mental hospital, and that was weird, and everybody was so serious, and we were shooting this scene where we were Bobby Kennedy's, you know hospital room and he's lying there and we're talking about whether we should turn his life support system on or off or I guess off and I, everybody, the whole crew is there and at one point I just turned to everybody and went, you know this really isn't actually happening, right? You understand this? And nobody laughed and it was just terrible and so I added one line to the scene where I'm talking to one of Jackie's uh, kids and he's having it's not that funny, but it was like the one levity moment in, in four hours. And I just, I was talking about his grades being bad. And I went up to Katie and I said, could I please just say, please, can I just say, now get to work on those grades or I'll poke your eyes out. And can I please, and she let me say it. So that was just, it's not, you know, it's not like the Three Stooges, but in this movie, that was a huge laugh. So, you know, I brought a little bit of a sense of humor to it. Which was very human, because I think yeah, they, no. they, they probably had yeah. that. I'm, you know, they're just, we're expecting a funnier joke, I think. <laughs> How did you guys feel about depicting uh, Ted Kennedy's, the, the moment when Ted Kennedy drove, drives the car off into the bridge and it, and it kills that woman? Because it's such this historical moment that defined Ted Kennedy for so long, no matter what he did in his political life. If you talk to anybody that was a 
on the right and you tried to say something positive about Ted Kennedy, they'd be like, oh, I killed that woman. So it became this thing that defined him for so many people in this country. What were you trying to add to his story and how hard was it to sort of tell, add to that story while at the same time having to show this moment that became his defining characteristic? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're trying to show both sides of the of the man, you know. Um, he had he done he'd done very bad things, and he did really good things too. So um, uh, we wanted to show the reality of of who he was. I mean, nobody really knows exactly what happened except for Ted himself. So um, this was the writer's interpretation of what actually happened at Chappaquiddick, and. You know, nobody knows. And so I bought into the version of the story that the writer was depicting, and that's what I actually think happened. Well, you do an incredible job of depicting someone who is does maybe care about the situation, but is also weighing political future and is also very confused and nervous about the situation as well. It's an incredible performance in, oh, thank in you. those scenes. Thanks. It was really fun and really nice to dig my teeth into that whole section because it's probably the most dramatic section of the whole miniseries, I think, was, was him going through that and what, and then how numb he was for that time. And he actually did. I mean, he waited 10 hours to report this to the police and what he was doing and what he actually was doing during that time is pretty incredible. So that stuff, you know, happened. And Did he actually call the the family in between? In, yeah, in well, that, so, so you guys know, um, he... Uh, left the scene of uh, left the the car and left her in the car. Um, well, I mean, we think he, he knew that she was in the car, and he went to a hotel and he got drunk and he woke up in the morning. He, he made this call and this was really important to me because they had cut this out and I said, no, no, you have to, you have to leave this in because it was the one attempt he made to have an alibi. Uh, so he called down the lobby and he said. He said, uh, "You gotta, you gotta turn. You gotta have these people across the across the hall turn off their music. They've been going for three hours. They've been making they've been making noise for three hours. That's my Ted Kennedy he voice. right into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've been making noise for three hours, and that was his attempt at an alibi, saying that he'd been there for three hours. And they cut that out. I said, guys, you gotta, you have. If I'm gonna play this part, you know." You got to put that back in. You got to keep the complexities the only, the only in. Yeah, made sense. Um, and then the thing that he did do, which really made no sense as an actor, but he did do this: is he woke up in the morning and he called the parents of uh, Mary Jo Kopechny. He called them and he said, um, he said that the, 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 the their daughter had died and there was an accident and he she died there was a bridge and the car went over the bridge which that made no sense to me at all so we had to talk and talk and talk about how sh how i should play that because it just didn't make any sense to me at all why he would make that phone call so i just decided um okay i'll play it and i'm going to play it as best i can but you have to let i i said let me slap <laughs> Let me slap myself in the head as hard as I physically can after I hang up the phone. So let me just hit, hit myself in the head as hard as I can. And that was the only way I could justify, like, just to show how confused he was and how scared he was and how nuts he was in the moment. Let me do that. And, and uh, John, let me do that. Because he knows how stupid it is to do that, I mean, as a, as a public figure, but at the same time, he's seeking redemption. He feels horrible about yeah, it. Yeah, the only way I could justify it was that he was, he was having a moment of insanity and guilt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Katie, you're directing an episode in, uh, in, this, in, in this series, uh, right? You're just, last time you were here, you had came with All We Had, your, your last film. So you are a director now. You didn't just make this one film. You're going to be directing a lot now. Yes, I am. I'm in, the, I'm in the process of adapting a book called Rare Objects that I will direct and star in. And um, yes, I'm really passionate about it. And it was really a, a great experience to direct one of these episodes, um, particularly because I knew, you know, I'd worked with the whole crew before. And John Kassar was a wonderful partner and mentor. Um, he was the other director, and he had directed the original series. Um, and at this point, point in my life it's it's really exciting to um take on more and to put my vision out there and um yeah so so this was this was a great fun and I I loved I love working with the actors 
and um, you know, trying to make something a little different, put a little spin on something. Was it a huge relief as a director going from like a low budget independent film to uh, a television it was, show? It was, it was amazing. <laughs> it, it, it's like very really scramble is hard to like make the day. You can kind of. Well, we shot this. We 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 shot all of the episodes at one time, so it wasn't like episode one, episode two. So we were constantly, um, you know, going back and forth from different years and different episodes. So. I would sh direct maybe two scenes in the morning and then not in the afternoon. And so it was it was like stepping into a well-oiled machine. Um, and that was a relief because John and I worked together, you know, so our episodes um, made sense and looked, you know, uh, continuous. Um, so it was more of a partnership. I didn't feel the weight of having to do it all on my own. And so that was a, a great relief. Matthew, uh, you have a play coming to New York City that you premiered at the West End in London. It's your, uh, your debut as a playwright. Can you tell me about this? Uh, sure. I'm a playwright. Uh, yes. Uh, about two years ago, I, uh, I've written TV shows before, but always with a partner. And I was always too scared to write something on my own. And, uh, shows that have been developed? That, that yeah, the shows that made it to air. Like I, did, I wrote a show called Mr. Sunshine that was on like eight years ago or something, and then The Odd Couple that was just on. Um, <laughs> but I was always too scared to write something on my own because I felt like my, my strength was in writing dialogue, but I, I, I wasn't great with structure and where should this scene go and should this scene follow this scene and is it more from you know, and I was scared about that. So I just set out to write something on my own. And this play came out, and I sent it to friends, and they said, this is pretty good, you should keep going. And then I sent it to some this director that I know who's an A-list British director, and he said, uh, I said, do I have anything here? And, uh, and he said, I'd like to direct this. And I was like, oh my god, I've written a play, I've written a play. <laughs> um, so um, we, we did a reading here in New York for buyers, and they bought it in London, and um, it broke the box office record at the theater, and it was pretty cool. Congratulations, man. That's Hashtag awesome. Hashtag playwright. Up. Yes. Uh, the play is called The End of Longing, right? It's called The End of Longing. The End of Longing. Yeah. It's going to be here in, on Broadway Lord, in May. Lori Tell Theater off Broadway. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you very much. What's uh, it about? It's about uh, four very broken people trying to find love in Los Angeles. Not that I can relate at all. Uh, let's open it up to the audience for some questions. Who has a, this guy's running with a microphone. <laughs> hey guys, so um, I'm just wondering, like since you two played uh, historical figures, like what was the, um, like the process of uh, bringing these, uh, you know, historical figures to life? Like what was like the process of it? Well, I kind of answered that for me, but go ahead. You've done it before. Was it the same process for you or did <clears throat> you kind of like feel like you could jump right back in? No, I, I worked very hard to jump back in um, on this, and I worked with my my acting teacher. and And what was what was helpful this time around is the Kennedy White House tapes had been released um, since the last time we did it. So I got to constantly be listening to Jackie's interviews and um, hearing her voice and her in her essence and her humor, um, and that really helped to, you know, get the feel of her. And also, I. Um, I printed out as many photos of her as possible and had like the private Jackie and the public Jackie and practiced like her poses to try to get her mannerisms. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just, it's kind of, it's a lot of practice so that it just is in your body so then you're not thinking about it when you're working. That's kind of the goal. Next question, hi. Hi, that was kind of my question. But I really, really wanted to know, were there certain things about her that you interpreted that you kind of saw and you're like, let me run with how I think that she would act? Or did you really just try to keep it more on the nose of what we know about her through history? No, I think um, I, I definitely took certain liberties. I mean, a, a, a large portion of the beginning of this show is she's in her apartment alone in, in New York and getting the news of Bobby's death and... Uh, getting a phone call from Ari and, and how she was with her children. And I, I don't, I have no idea how those conversations really went or how she really was with her children behind closed doors. Um, but I think it's one of those things where I did a lot of research um, 
and based on how she was in interviews and you just kind of do guess and she was such a lovely woman and um her children were wonderful so I just you kind of you know assumed she was she really was a great mom <laughs> next question we're going to take our last question from an online viewer. This is for Katie and Matthew. Jenny wants to know, do you have any rituals for preset before you go on, on camera? Oh, Jenny. <laughs> Every time. Uh, preset rituals? Um, burpees. Yeah, burpees. <laughs> you probably do actually do burpees. Very healthy. No, only if I'm in an exercise class that they make you. Burpees are the one you go down, kick back, kick in, come up. Okay, that's a burpee. Yeah. yeah. That's a burpee. Making and, sure. and I just actually just really burp. <laughs> I don't want to end on that note before we <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys actually, do you have any traditions at all? Any rituals before you go on camera? Well, for this, I actually, every day in the makeup trailer, I was listening to the tapes. And I was repeating what she was saying over and over again. And... Um, and then some days it was just all about having fun music in the trailer because, as Matthew was saying, it was it was a serious miniseries, so we had some pop music to yes, I remember break that. it up. And what I was, what was your what was your favorite pop song while you were shooting this? Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce. I mean, the Lemonade album was out, so that there happened. You go, yeah. <laughs> and I just removed my shirt and watched a Tobey Maguire film. Cider House? Uh, no, uh, Wonder Boys or Sea Biscuit, whatever, whatever. whatever I uh, feel like. the, the Kennedys after Camelot uh, premieres on Reels. Is it April April second? Excuse me. This Sunday. This at Sunday, 9 PM. April second at nine p.m. And then the following Sunday, so it's two episodes each Sunday. And then the end of Longing will be uh, on Broadway in uh, May. May eighteenth, yes. May eighteenth. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Matthew. you very Thank much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you all.